I'd like to call this work session of the Southampton Town Board <coughs> to order on this 23rd day of January 2020. Please rise. Join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <coughs> Kim, would you call the roll? Yes. Supervisor Schneiderman. Here. Councilwoman Lofstad. Here. Councilman Martel. Here. Councilman Bouvier. Here. Councilman Scavoni. Well, Tommy John will be joining us shortly. Late. When do we get to move back to the auditorium? Anybody know? No? no? I don't know. When the heat goes on. When the heat goes on. Not the auditorium. The upstairs. Yeah. The boardroom. Yeah. There's no heat in there right now. That's the issue. So. Okay. Well, we're 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 down here. So uh, we have a couple things on our agenda. Not too much though. We're going to review the uh, agenda for the January 28th meeting. We'll uh, have some updates and then we'll go into executive session. So, and there's some add-ons to the agenda in the red folder. So, let's go through this and then uh, the clerk can get it published. All right, so this is going to be the agenda for the meeting of the 28th. It will occur at 6 p.m. at the audit in the auditorium, that's what it says, on the main level? Yes. Not here. We're going to be upstairs. Upstairs, because it's an evening meeting. Okay. All right, so we'll be in the auditorium on the main floor, evening meeting next Tuesday. And let's see what we've got here. One public hearing on the acquisition of a, <coughs> I guess it's to say an historic, a historic preservation and conservation easement. Is the need an end there? Uh, who's a grammar person? On the Topping Rainer House on property located at 121 South Road, West Hampton. Um, so that's the only public hearing. And then going to resolutions, the first one, uh, 2020, number one, adopting a procurement policy for 2020. I guess I have a note that it's being withdrawn. I'm going to withdraw it. Uh, are we what? Does it clean? A, oh, okay. It was, it was reintroduced. So yeah, so we reintroduced it. Yes. So there's. All right, so I'll withdraw that one on the floor when we get there. Mm. Page twenty-five. Thank you, Julie. Uh, this town board resolution 219-1248 so memorialized in resolution in support of HR 763 enacting in the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Tax of 2019. I intend to withdraw this on the floor. Okay, so the first two we're going to get withdrawn. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> so the next one, 33412, is the procurement policy. So that's going to go on for a bunch of pages. 49. 49. 49. Next one's mine. ID 33437. Okay. Oh. Yes? Keep going? Yes. Okay, good. Authorization for a supervisor <laughs> to sign application and contract to accept 2020 New York State Office of Children and Family Services funding for Southampton Town Youth Activities. John, you want to read for Tony Uh Town Board Resolution ID 33343. Authorize the purchase of heavy duty parts, Sterling Mac and Ford from Trucks Incorporated using Suffolk County contract. Town Board Resolution 33342. I'm sorry. Is that not the same number? No. Nope. Uh, 33342 to authorize purchases for Caterpillar heavy equipment parts, accessory supplies, and related services. Town Board Resolution 33419, authorized purchases of automotive Ford, part Ford vehicle parts and services from Suffolk County contract with Newens Bay Shore, For Bay Shore Ford Incorporated. Town Board Resolution ID 33344, authorized purchases of automotive Ford vehicle parts and services from Suffolk County contract with Otis Ford Auto Body. 
Town Board Resolution 33338, authorized purchases of replacement of heavy duty brake and truck parts from Fleetside Truck and Trailer Parts. ID 33429, authorized the supervisor to execute 2020 Human Understanding and Growth Services HUGS contract. <coughs> 33436, authorized supervisor to sign 2020 contract extension Green Velvet Tree Inc. for tree and stump removal for east and west of the Shinnecock Canal. Is that a, that's for highway? That ties into what you and I were talking about last night. Tree, tree and stump removal. Um, 33360 authorizes supervisor to sign 2020 contract extension with United Metro United Corp as primary and Quag Sinclair Fuel Inc as secondary for ultra-low diesel fuel. Town Board Resolution 33415, authorized the purchase of an x-ray system from New York State OGS contract with Smith's Detection Incorporated. On, the, on this motion, this is just a security feature for Justice Corps, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. That was Rick's first resolution. It, all right. <laughs> they choked me. <laughs> right, go ahead. Who's next? I am. 33381 authorizes the purchase of auto parts and accessories from U.S. Communities contract with Advanced Auto Parts. Town Board Resolution ID 33378 authorizes the purchase of a compact truck loader and compact excavator from New York State OGS contract with Clark Equipment Company, DBA, Bobcat Company, and Dusan Infracore Construction Corporation. Town Board Resolution ID 33411 authorized the purchase of Encore Hazmat Rescue Truck from HGA by Cooperative. 33353 authorized the purchase of gasoline from the New York State OGS contract with Sprague Operating Resources LLC. Town Board Resolution ID 33346 to authorize the purchase of road salt from the New York State OGS contract with Atlantic Salt Incorporated. 33420 authorizes the supervisor to execute a 2020 contract extension with Patricia uh, Aitken as part time program coordinator for the Peconic Estuary Program. Town Board Resolution 33424 authorizes the supervisor to execute a contract with Eagle Control Corp as sole source provider for the supply of constant chlor briquettes to perform services and routine maintenance and SCADA upgrades to the constant chlor chlorinator at the Hampton Bays Water District. Town Board Resolution 33434, authorize the supervisor to execute a new consulting contract with Pace Analytical Services to provide water analysis services to the Hampton Bays Water District. Three three four two two authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract with Fox Land Surveying for an updated survey for the Jackson Avenue complex. Town Board Resolution three three four three five authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract with L K McLean Associates PC for professional services to be provided for the Alwife Creek habitat enhancement. Town Board Resolution ID 33418 authorizes the supervisor to sign a sole source contract with General Code LLC for services for the Town Clerk's Office. Town Board Resolution 33423 authorizes the supervisor to sign an amendments to existing leases with Bell Ringer, now known as Briscoe Protective for Equipment and Monitoring at 399 Mill Road, West Hampton, formerly known as the Bauer Barn. 33414 awards an authorized supervisor to sign a contract with MRJ Industries LTD for Parks Maintenance Administration Office Relocation. Town Board Resolution ID 33404 to award an authorized supervisor to sign a contract for district wide well and pump maintenance and repair at the Hampton Bays Water District with Delta Well and Pump Incorporated. Town Board Resolution ID 33416, Upgrade Microsoft Active Directory Services. 33421, Identify Authorized Agents to Work with BNB. 
33425. Recalls and amends resolution 1034 of 2019. Three three four one seven recalls and amends town board resolution one twenty six of two thousand nineteen. Three three four two seven two thousand nineteen request for proposals provide planning and engineering for the implementation of the Hampton Bay's bicycle lane and multi use trail in the town of Southampton. 33399 amends the 20 through 24 capital budget for Shinnecock commercial dock. 33377 amends the 20 through 24 capital budget for townwide <coughs> heavy equipment. 33400 authorized general fund and part town pay as you go purchase for various town computers and large format scanner. Town board resolution 33410. Authorized general fund pay as you go purchase for x ray machine for Justice Court. Uh, 33430 <coughs> appoints the Agricultural Advisory Committee for 2020. I'm just looking at, give me one second. Janice, are there any changes? Or? Uh, just the one. Uh, uh, oh, Rachel, Rachel Stevens. Stevens. Right. Some, we had uh, somebody left, right? Yes. And Rachel Thank Stevens is the woman, she's an organic farmer from west of the canal. Yes, We've indeed. been trying to get onto the committee for a while. All right. Um, <laughs> three, three, four, four, two. Um, do we have an add on that's going to. Is it the add on for the same yeah. number? No. no. This one has to be full. All right, so let's take that off the agenda. Yeah, it's in your red packet for the last one. Yeah. All right, um, 33443 appoints Michael um, Charrier, Chair of the ARB for 2020. And first, we have to put him on the ARB, so we'll have to make sure the other resolution is first. You good? Town Board Resolution ID 33335, appoint temporary Board of Assessment Review members for 2020. Hold on for a second. Temporary members? Why is that? They help in the, in the fall when St. Rose. Um, um, oh, right. And, and, yeah. They're not the actual board of assessment. They're, they're, they're appointed annually for grievance days. For grievance days and for any follow up. So I have somebody who would like to serve on this, um, even though temporary it might work out. And now, is there a reason why there's only three temporary members? I can speak with the sole assessor. I believe it's typically three, but I can follow up on that. Hmm. Okay. Um, 33444 reappoints individuals to the Conservation Board. Uh, that's Sunshine Gums, Harry Ludlow, Thomas Rickenback. Uh, 33445 appoints Harry Ludlow, Chair of the Con Board for 2020. 33446 appoints George Hine, Vice Chair of the Conservation Board for 2020. Is he currently vice chair? I guess he is. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 33447 uh, reappoints Stephanie Davis to Landmarks and Historic District Board. 33448 appoints Ed Wisnowski, chair of the Landmarks and Historic Districts Board for 2020. 33449 appoints Licensing Review Board for 2020. Those are the exact same people. Uh, uh, 33450 appoints uh, Anthony Vitalia, Chair of the LRB. Uh, 33440 reappoints individuals to the Public Safety Commission. 
Dead Knight, Robert Ross. <clears throat> 33441 reappoints Robert Ross as Public Safety Commission, as Chair of the Public Safety Commission, 2020. 33433 three, three, reappoints Jason Hahn to the Zoning Board of Appeals. 33438 uh, three, appoints Adam Grossman Chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. 33439 three, appoints Brian the Vice Chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Those that they're both currently serving as what, Chair and Vice Chair. 33431 <clears throat> three, three, reappoints members of the Transportation Committee. 33432 three, appoints Vincent Taldone to the Transportation Commission. Uh, go ahead, John. Town Board Resolution ID 33361 appoint 2020 Airport Noise Advisory Committee. Okay. 33202 two, appoints 2020 Citizen Advisory Committee members. Which one is this? Oh, it's got all of them. All right, so. Bridge Hampton. Yeah. All right. It's got a lot of them anyway. All right. Um, 33110 retains Stephen O'Brien of O'Brien and O'Brien LLP in the matter of Thomas J. Salvatore versus Deborah. Renee Brathwaite and Gary J. Weber. 33384 authorizes Community Preservation Fund tax refund pursuant to the first time home buyers exemption for Diana and Londona. 33385 authorized Community Preservation Fund tax refund pursuant to the first time home buyers exemption for Wilson Calais and uh, Nidia. Chabla. Town Board Resolution ID 33426 to authorize waiver of parks and recreation facility use fee for the Peconic Baykeeper. 33020 accepts retirement of Mike Benacasa, Chief Building Inspector and Land Management. Well, he will sorely be missed. Um, it's effective March 31st, 2020. So our chief building inspector is leaving us. Um, Well-deserved retirement. 33397 appoints uh, Richard McEwen to water district superintendent in the Hampton Bays Water District. 33398 appoints James Cappers to assistant water district superintendent in the Hampton Bays Water District. 33402 appoints Warren Booth to Senior Water Treatment Plant Operator in the Hampton Bays Water District. Actually, I had wanted to call him first, but, hello. <clears throat> 33396 appoints Ryan Murphy to Town Code Compliance and Emergency Management Administrator in Public Safety. So that'll be our, our new director of uh, our Public Safety Department. We've decided on Ryan Murphy, and he's accepted. Um, 33392, authorized drug court judge to attend the association, the association of drug court judicial training conference. 33391, authorized justice court personnel to attend New York State Magistrates Association with New York State Association of Magistrates Court Clerks, Inc. annual conference. <clears throat> 33413, authorized town engineer Christine Fenton. Fenton, 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 to attend the Association of Towns annual conference. 33347, workplace wellness program. ID 33409, notice of public hearing to consider amending town code 312-11, authorizing a stop sign at the intersection of Southampton Hills Court and Middle Line Highway. Back. Where is it? Page 
Terrell. Uh, town Board Resolution ID 33405, Notice of Public Hearing to Consider Amending Town Code 312-15, Vehicles and Traffic, Rescinding Authorization of a Yield Sign at the Intersection of Windmere Close and Gardner's Lane. Okay. Town Board Resolution ID 33406, Notice of Public Hearing to Consider Amending Town Code 312-9, Authorizing a Stop Sign at the Intersection of Windmere Close. Yeah, same thing. <coughs> one, one is 15, rescinding a One is rescinding sign. and the other is putting it on. And Gardner's Lane. 33087, Authorize Acquisition of a Historic Preservation and Conservation Easement on the Topping Rainer House. On property located at 120 South Road, West Hampton. That should be 121. It's a public hearing in the beginning. I think that's the right one. It says 121 South Road. And this says 120 South Road. It's 121. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we don't want to put the easement on the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a big surprise. <laughs> Uh, Town Board Resolution ID 33383, uh, recall and amend Resolution 219-1160, Road Review Application for 18 Fairway Court, LLC. Suffolk County Tax Map 0900-021.00-01.00-010.009, situated Noyak is accepted. Did you read that number again? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three, you two, want it backwards? <laughs> 3267, oh, this is now in the red, uh, red folder. The Add ons 32670. Elect to consider concern for independent living, full gospel church change of zone petition. Let me just take a look at how that resolution reads. You got my email about the. Well. So, all right, so before we, we move on, this is why we have these work session things. I put this resolution on because they're sort of running out of time. Mm -hmm. um, they've been buying options to keep the, uh, the idea alive of creating an affordable workforce housing development and, and I guess veterans in that five acres of the property associated with the church on County Road 39. We held a work session so our process is we either have to decide to uh, accept a formal application or not. Uh, if this resolution passes, they'll be able to make a formal application. The, the caveat I, I put in, actually there's two. One is uh, that the application could not include taking access from the two neighborhoods that adjoin it, other than fire, you know, emergency access. And then limit it to you know 60 or less. I think that the number is something we can debate, but can't be more than 60. The one that comes to uh, you know that gets submitted. So I have no idea whether this resolution will pass or not. But uh, we've debated it a lot. We all know that workforce housing is uh, sorely needed, and uh, particularly east of the Shinnecock Canal, which this would be. And uh, concern for independent living has a good reputation. They have uh, a 60 unit facility on um, Long Island that you can visit if you want to see what the kind of work that they do. Some of you may have already seen it. So, uh, because of the time sensitivity of it, I felt uh, I wanted to give it a, at least the board's audience to make a decision so that the guy knows either you know, he's paying quite a bit to keep the option alive. So. We just need to let them know either we're going to consider it or we're not going to consider it. All right. Um, and next one, uh, 33451 reappoints Richard Sheehan to the Audit Advisory Committee. Uh, the next one, 33452 appoints Ed Moneypenny as chair of the Audit Advisory Committee for 2020. Uh, 33453 appoints the members of the Anti Bias Task Force Committee. 2020. I don't think there's any changes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. She was on the uh, anti bias task force? Yes. So, but we don't have a specific number of seats, right? So, no. no. All right. Um, three, three, 
Yeah, she, 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 she left town, right? She's, she's moving out of Southampton. Yeah. <clears throat> um, three, three, four, five, seven appoints individuals to the Architectural Review Board. And uh, do we have, oh, I have the names here. Um, Jared. Yeah, Michael uh, Charrier, Jankowski, uh, Joe Burke, uh, Julie Keyes, Tim Rumpf. And then we we still have two seats to fill. Correct. On this, so we'll we'll, we'll have the resolution with the names there. And that's it, right? Anybody have any questions about that? All right, Kim, you can go ahead and publish it. So uh, just some updates, I guess I'll start with updates. So the, the pipe under Dune Road, not under Dune Road, pipe under Chinnacock Bay, the Hampton Bay's water district pipe that had been broken is now fixed and operational, it is in service. It took a little longer than we had hoped, but uh, it's complicated when you're fixing a pipe in the middle of you know the winter and freezing cold temperatures that happens to be underwater. So uh, they did a good job. It was not an, it, it was a real challenge. And uh, we had challenges with the temporary pipe that they ran over the bridge. They ran uh, two uh, black, uh, I guess, PVC type of pipes, uh, vinyl pipes that um, were exposed to the elements and froze up a couple times, which meant that we didn't have any water going down Dune Road. Luckily, there was only really just one business operating uh, Sundays and uh, occasionally Oakland's for special events, but uh, um, the operator was very uh, uh, easy to work with and understanding of the situation. So we, we thank uh, Stephanie Oakland for her patience as we, uh, we, you know, we finally got, we got the water main going, which is a good thing the health department has signed off on it. That's sort of the good news. <laughs> the bad news is the health department uh, gave us till uh, 2022, I think. Yep. 2022 to uh, eliminate that pipe from service, which, uh, if you looked at the draft capital plan, that was not going to happen until I think 2024. So we're going to have to move that up two years, um, which means uh, we, you know we'll have to bond for that at an earlier earlier time. And uh, yeah, we can discuss that with the water district and with uh, H2M and with the. Uh, Bill Merkin from DeVerco and Bartolucci, but I, we, I don't see how we could accept the capital plan that shows it in a year that the health department, beyond when the health department told us it has to be, uh, it has to be taken out of service. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that. I left a message with uh, Mr. Merkin. Um, staying in the Dune Road area, we do have a bit of a nor'easter schedule. It's a small one. For I think Saturday, so uh, we're watching that carefully. The county has been adding material to the little berm, and uh, I think they're going to continue to add a, some more. They're, they've been preparing to add some additional material to get ready for this weekend. Um, you know, the dredge is coming in early February, and we well, should be fine after that point. They're going to put I think 600,000 yards of sand on that beach. They're going to build up a, a substantial dune. And we won't be going through this constant exercise. So uh, let's hope for the best this weekend. And uh, you know, maybe, maybe that berm is frozen enough that it'll be more like a solid wall when the waves hit it. But uh, I'm not counting on that. So uh, we, you know, we, might, we might see additional to uh, overtoppings or even uh, that dune getting washed out. I noticed the material they're using is not as clean as it had been. They're starting to see a lot more rocks in the material that they're using. 
Um, and uh, they've stockpiled quite a bit at Alden Kirk Park. If you've been down there, I was down there uh, yesterday. So they have quite a bit of material that they're going to be using to shore that up for this weekend's nor'easter. Um, but uh, we certainly appreciate the county taking these uh, precautionary measures. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, uh, I was able to attend with uh, Councilman Martell and uh, Councilman Schivoni a, uh, a news conference with Suffolk County Water Authority on the water mains that have been going in in East Quag. Were you there too or no? No. no. Okay. Uh, so they, they ins you know, if you all remember, we had detections of these polyfluorinated compounds in that area and uh, decided, you know, even though we didn't know yet what the source was, that we would uh, uh, try to do our part to help get people off of private wells and onto uh, safe, reliable drinking water in that area. So we uh, leveraged some CPF dollars, uh, got a state grant for a million dollars, and uh, working with the Suffolk County Water Authority, put in um, almost 11,000, 10,800 feet of new water mains to hook up 115 homes. Uh, more than half of those homes are now connected um, and others are, are hooking up. So uh, it's, a, it's a big, you know, it's a successful project. It, uh, you know, we're covering all the costs for these residents, uh, including the service connections and the lines to the house. So, uh, you know, we're doing our part to make sure people in that area uh, can feel confident when they drink their water. Um, so the next thing I'd like to mention, last night, I think, Julie, you were not able to attend, but I think Rick and John, Tom, and Tommy John and I were able to go to the police, uh, annual police awards. It was filmed, so if you uh, weren't able to attend, you can watch it on uh, CTV. It was very nice. Uh, it, we got to hear some of the stories of some great detective work that was done, and uh, police officer of the year. Who did they? Who was the? Uh, was it? Detective Stabile. Stabile. Uh, detective Stabile was named police officer of the year. So, uh, uh, and and that the police chief highlighted a particular investigation that he was involved with, which was really, a, it was quite a story, so uh, um, preventing additional uh, abuse of a, a young woman. So that was a really nice thing. And uh, I know uh, also some of us were able to attend the Martin Luther King breakfast in Hot Bog. Uh, that was on Monday. Uh, Rhino Rick was there, and I think uh, John, you were there. Tommy John, you may have been there. Or? I was at the Martin Luther King celebration oh, in, at the Rogers Memorial Library okay. in Southampton. Well, you got to mention it. They <laughs> mentioned your name at the other one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, good. I That's thought nice. maybe you were there because they said your name. <laughs> uh, in spirit. But uh, it, was, it, it was good. And uh, we, the town has been offering diversity training uh, for town employees. So that was held yesterday. Uh, uh, two-day training session so it's also being held today uh, at the Hampton Bay's firehouse let me also point out that we have uh, a special meeting coming up on February 5th it's Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. at the Hampton Bay's Community Center this is a meeting of the Hampton Bay's Water District Commissioners which is us and uh, we're going to be going over the capital plan and uh, Diverco Bartolucci and Bill Merklin will present the 10-year capital plan and uh, Len Marchese, our town controller, will take the anticipated debt service and convert it into anticipated water rates so that people know what to expect over the next 10 years. You know, we still have to wrestle with this idea of you know whether the people of Hampton Bay should be absorbing all that debt service and 
or whether we want to look to a larger utility that could offset some of those borrowing costs and uh, you know potentially keep rates lower um, losing some of the perhaps local uh, advantage of you know having the Hampton Bay's water district run locally um, so that's a you know a debate for a later date right now we're just trying to provide people with a reasonable expectation about what their rates are going to be all things being equal so that we can maintain you know the water district you know not the Cadillac version but uh, you know uh, I don't want to insult any cars here, so it's a kind of the standard modern utility. Uh, maybe not, you know, with some of the testing laboratories that maybe other districts might have, but you know the basics to provide clean, safe drinking water. So that will be on uh, February 5th at 7 p.m. at the Hampton Bays Community Center, and I urge people to come, ask questions. We'll have experts there to answer those questions. All right, um, that's all I got. Um, Julie, we'll start your direction. Nothing today. Thank you. Rick? Just adding the uh, East End cleanup that Christine Scalara usually spearheads. It now falls for me, which I'm delighted. Uh, the tentative date for that cleanup is April 25th. Okay, uh, John? No, you pretty much covered it. Okay. <laughs> You did a very good job, Supervisor, but I do want to uh, give a shout out to the employees of the Hampton Bays Water District. Uh, they were really uh, working under some adverse conditions and, you know, they laid several thousand feet of poly pipe and kept the water going and, um, and now it's up and running, so kudos to them. All right, um, so we have some executive session items. Um, land acquisition. Confidential legal advice. So I'll make a motion to end our work session and go into executive session on those items. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned for all other purposes.